God, we gather as your people to raise our song above, and we dare to claim the promise of your love. Though the day may not yet be here, we trust it soon will be when your children will be free. Oh, may our hearts and minds be opened, fling the church doors open wide. May there be room enough for everyone inside. For in God there is a welcome, in God we all belong. May that welcome be our song. God, we're working for the future when children far and wide can live their lives with dignity and pride. As they grow in strength and stature, may they join us hand in hand, as against all hate we stand. Oh, may our hearts and minds be opened, fling the church doors open wide. May there be room enough for everyone inside. For in God there is a welcome. In God we all belong, may that welcome be our song. Welcome to worship with Prince of Peace Lutheran Church in the Crescent, Minnesota. I am Pastor Anna Sorensen. Thank you to Ron Wilkie for serving as our cantor for this service and Chris Gustafson, our Minister of Music. As you continue in this time of worship, I invite you to make sure that you are centered, open to the Holy Spirit. Take a moment to listen and breathe. We worship in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our call to worship is based on Psalm 111. Praise the Lord. I thank the Lord with all my heart. The words of the Lord are magnificent. I thank the Lord with all my heart. The Lord is full of mercy and compassion. I thank the Lord with all my heart. God remembers his covenant forever. I thank the Lord with all my heart. God's handiwork is honesty and justice. I thank the Lord with all my heart. Let us pray. God of our salvation, you are the source of wisdom and joy. Your love and mercies are not limited to one time or one people. You continue to save and heal, transcending artificial boundaries we set. For such an expansive love, it is our right our duty and our joy to offer you thanks and praise, now and forever. Amen. comes from the Gospel of Luke, 
chapter 17, verses 11 through 19. On the way to Jerusalem, Jesus was going through the region between Samaria and Galilee. As he entered a village, ten men with a skin disease approached him. Keeping their distance, they called out, saying, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. When he saw them, he said to them, Go and show yourselves to the priests. And as they went, they were made clean. Then one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back, praising God with a loud voice. He prostrated himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him. And he was a Samaritan. Then Jesus asked, Were not ten made clean? So where are the other nine? Did none of them return to give glory to God except this foreigner? Then he said to him, Get up and go on your way. Your faith has made you well. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. In 1789, at the request of the House of Representatives, President George Washington issued a proclamation that we would have a national day of thanks. Now, some of the representatives thought that having a national observance of thanksgiving would make a mockery of genuine prayer and thanksgiving. Other representatives objected that the government had no business mandating personal piety. But the majority of the House wanted a nationwide day of thanks, and so it is that we continue this tradition today. So thanksgiving is not limited to people of faith, but at the same time, gratitude and thankfulness are practices. People of many faiths, even no faith at all, can participate in. Gratitude and thankfulness are a deep part of our practice of Christian faith. Think of the words we opened with from Psalm 111. Praise the Lord. I will thank the Lord with all my heart. These words are at least 3,000 years old. The psalm calls us to remember that God is the giver of all good gifts, that thanks is properly returned to the one who made us and redeemed us. And while we do have a thanksgiving day, we, people who belong to Christ, we are called to lives of thanksgiving, not just a day. In many places throughout scripture, we hear invitations and even commands to give thanks to God. Giving thanks is good for us. Imagine that you are going to see your doctor because you have had low energy and are depressed. After a thorough evaluation, she prescribes a pill that according to research can boost your energy, improve your mood, generate optimism, increase your well-being, help you bounce back from setbacks faster, enhance your self-esteem, make you kinder, improve your social connections, decreases your risk of alcoholism, helps you sleep better, expedites recovery from illness, decreases the risk of infection, and increases your earnings. This pill has no known side effects. And even better, it's free, no copayment. Will you take it? If you answered yes, its secret name is a daily practice of gratitude. That's a quote from the book, The Mayo Clinic Guide to Stress-Free Living, by Dr. Amit Sood. 
Dr. Sue developed a class with the same name, and he wrote this book in response to seeing many patients deal in an unhealthy way with stress, while other patients faced great adversity with a sense of clarity and purpose and understanding the meaning of their life. Dr. Sood took the best research in neurobiology and applied it in a practical way to coping with stressful things. And what he found give traits that help all humans deal with stress. Those traits are gratitude, compassion, acceptance, a higher meaning, and forgiveness. One of my colleagues said, it sounds like neurobiology discovered the gospel by another name. Gratitude, compassion, acceptance, higher meaning, forgiveness. A practice of daily gratitude can make us healthier, bodily, emotionally, socially, and spiritually. It's like God knew a lot about our brains and neurobiology when he commanded us to give thanks. See, our brains, they are wired to want new things, new experiences, new stimulations, new objects. And when we get what our brain wants, we move on to wanting something else new. And we're still dissatisfied. Every time we advance the ball down the field, the goalpost moves farther away. And we're not happy with where we are. There are two ways to seek contentment in life. One is to always go after the new, the exciting, the adventure. This kind of contentment is dependent on what the outside world brings. And the goalpost keeps moving. The other way to contentment is to want what you already have and to love the people who are already there. This kind of contentment is not dependent on the world or on what advertisers tell us or what the news anchors report each night. And daily practices of gratitude will rewire our brains for the second kind of contentment. Jesus said, I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink or about your body or what you will wear. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Indeed, your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. Gratitude, compassion, acceptance, higher meaning, forgiveness. I wonder if Jesus read Dr. Sood's book before he gave the Sermon on the Mount. Or more likely, God made us in amazing ways that science is only beginning to understand. So I want to spend a little time inviting you to practice gratitude right now in this time of worship. Begin by thinking of five people for whom you are thankful. If you've got your October journal, you might want to use that journaling page to write down the names of those people. Say thank you to God for that person's presence in your life. Or maybe more profoundly for them, while they are with you, thank God for them. Tell them that you are thankful. It's a gift for someone to know that you are thankful for them. And another practice of gratitude. Five things that you often take for granted, but you should be thankful for. If our brains are always 
working, if they want to have us seek new and better, we retrain our brains by intentional thanksgiving for common, ordinary wonders of God's generosity. God shows up in ordinary things, but extraordinary. Sunrises, conversations, neighbors, bread, and wine, and water. And as we practice being thankful for ordinary, our heart will desire these beautiful, ordinary places where God keeps showing up day after day after day. Thanks be to God. Amen. the one who breaks the darkness with a liberating light. Praise the one who frees the prisoners, turning blindness into sight. Praise the one who preached the gospel, healing every dread disease, calming storms and feeding thousands with the very bread of peace. Praise the one who blessed the children with a strong yet gentle word. Praise the one who drove out demons with a piercing two-edged sword. Praise the one who brings cool water to the desert's burning sand. From this well comes living water, quenching thirst in every land. Praise the one true love incarnate, Christ who suffered in our place. Jesus died and rose for many, that we may know God by grace. Let us sing for joy and gladness, sing what our God has done. Praise the one redeeming glory, praise the one who makes us Let us pray for the church and the world and those in need. We pray to you, O oh God, for the needs of the world, for those enslaved by political, military, or social oppression, for those suffering from violence and illness, for those at risk because of famine drought, or natural disaster. We pray to you for the renewing of creation, for an end to harmful habits and willful ruin, for heightened care for species and habitats at risk, for faithful stewardship among us towards Earth's resources. We pray to you for the cares of our community, for those who have lost jobs, homes, or hope. For those who are hungry today and will be hungry again tomorrow. For those troubled in mind, body, or spirit. For those who are in recovery. Heal us, we pray, in our diseases, our estrangements, and the broken places in our lives. May we return to you and to one another 
in joy and thanksgiving, according to your grace. Amen. One of the things that I am thankful for is your ongoing support of ministry at Prince of Peace for the time that you offer, for your prayers, and for your financial support. These are some of the things that keep us connected even when we're not in the same space. The video equipment, the sound equipment, internet connection, the time and effort of volunteer cantors like Ron and staff like Chris. We are the body of Christ together, even when we aren't worshiping in the same room. Thank you. And now, as we come to the end of our time of worship, may God watch over you and over all people. May Christ restore you, body, mind, and soul. May the Holy Spirit help you to remain faithful, giving thanks to God your whole life long. Amen. Go in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thankful hearts and voices raise, tell everyone what God has done. Let everyone who seeks the Lord rejoice and bear the name of Christ. Send us with your promises and lead your people forth in joy with shouts of thanksgiving.